So I uploaded a video like two weeks ago that I got this 78 GMC. Well, it's finally time to start working on it and get it on the road. When I bought the truck, it had no brakes. And the guy told me he assumed that a line blew out. Well, I finally got to looking at it. And it might be hard to see on camera. But the underside of that booster there is damp. And upon further inspection, we finally got to pop the cap. The fluid really isn't low. Like if a line blew out, there'd be no fluid in here at all. And I was, you know, I pulled this off a trailer. He never added fluid to it. I pulled it in the garage yesterday. It's still holding some fluid. So I think to start, I'm going to change the master cylinder and see what happens. I'm still going to pull the rear wheels off and uh, see if anything happened in there, like a wheel cylinder or something like that. But I definitely think this master cylinder is garbage to start. The pedal is real soft, but not soft to like a blown out line is where it goes right to the floor. So I'm going to show you how to change, uh, you know, this is pretty much going to be like in any older car, the master cylinder. Some newer cars get crazy with the wiring and everything, but this is really a pretty simple job, aside from bleeding the brakes. Okay, first step, PB Blaster. Yes, I actually have this in bulk. I have a few cans of it, and whoa, look, there's more. And one of these spray cans. You work on old cars, this is what happens. So you want to hit up, obviously, the lines. And then there's uh, two screws here. Or two bolts, rather. Or studs, actually. I'm hitting the wrong thing like, totally here. Uh, GMs and Fords, I see. Well, most vehicles have two. Uh, some older Dodges have four mounting, mounting studs or bolts. So I'm going to let that soak in a while, and then I'll uh, show you what the next step is. Okay, next thing you want to do is take off the brake lines. You want to do that before you take off the two mounting bolts, or studs, or nuts, or whatever, so that you have the mass cylinder held solid while you loosen them. Now for this, you're going to want some of these. These are line wrenches. You'll see how they have more sides than a regular wrench. This is because brake line fittings and other line fittings are very uh, apt to round off. So if you don't have these, buy them. Because if you use a regular wrench on this, it may work, but chances are you're going to round it off. And then you'll be changing these nuts at the very least, if not the entire brake lines down. It's much easier just to get the right size one of these and put it on here. And if you're lucky it'll break right off, or loosen rather. There it goes. See that? Only a slight bit of force was needed. Only enough to shake the entire truck. Now I'll do the other line with both hands to make it a lot easier. Okay, I have both of these off. Um, something kind of peculiar I just found is, well, look at the flare on this. Something terrible happened there. That might have a lot to do with what's going on with these brakes. Because that flare's cracked. It's off-center. I don't even know how that happened. Because this line... I don't know. The line looks original. I don't know. This is a new one for me. But uh, after I get the mass cylinder on them, I'm going to have to fix that flare. I'm going to have to cut the nut back a little bit and reflare it. That's not good. Yeah, now you just take the studs off here, and your old mass cylinder's off. Okay, I got the nuts off. So now, whoa, look at that. It was bad. That's one of the signs the rear seal blows out on them. That's where I was saying it leaks. So as you can see, all that fluid just blew out. So that was probably my lack of brakes. So that was a lot of fluid built up in there. Couldn't have planned that better. I had no idea it was like that. Some real caught on camera footage right there. Um, so as you can see, other than these two studs, nothing holds this on. This is the rod that presses on the inside of the master cylinder. Uh, that goes, in this case, into the vacuum diaphragm and the booster. The booster is this big thing here. This is what gives you power brakes. Uh, there's two types of these. This is a vacuum assisted. There's also a hydro boost, which is a hydraulic assisted, which is powered off your power steering pump. Um, normally on larger trucks and diesel vehicles, they don't have vacuum. 
Uh, if you have manual brakes, this rod would actually go right into your brake pedal inside directly without a booster on it. Now I'm going to cover two steps that a lot of people forget. First of all, look at your new master cylinder. Make sure it's the same one. This one is. Uh, second thing, see this bag the new one comes in? You put the old one in it. I saw auto parts. Guess what happens if people bring these in? First of all, you drain them. I already did it there. Then you put the bag. You put it in the bag. What happens is, you bring this back, you don't drain it, you don't put it in the bag. Now your brake fluid just destroys a thousand dollars in parts that are getting sent back to our warehouse distribution center. So this is why it comes with a bag. So yeah, just ranting there for a second. Okay, there's a new mass cylinder on. Well, for the most part, I just bolted it on. I gave it a nice coat of gloss black spray paint so it doesn't turn into a rusty pile of crap after a week of when it starts flash rusting. I'm not going to cover, uh, cover bench bleeding. Now, before you do anything, you have to bench bleed this, which involves putting the master cylinder in a vise and pumping the fluid through it to get the air out of it. Uh, I made an entire video which goes completely in depth into bench bleeding. So you can go watch that. I'll put the link in the description. After it's bench bled, you just put these caps back in, which you, I kind of spray painted over so they're hard to see, to keep the crud out. Then you reattach the lines. Now I'm not going to reattach the lines because I pointed out that one flare is screwed up. But after you would reattach your lines, assuming you don't have a freak show line like I do, then you go through and bleed the brakes. Uh, the, the order you bleed brakes on most vehicles, like this one, is passenger rear to driver rear, passenger front to driver front. And basically you pump fluid, you have someone staying in the interior, push the pedal down, you crack the bleeder screw in the back, you let the fluid come out, you close the bleeder, and they let the pedal up. You repeat that procedure until you get no air out of each wheel. You want to do it because it's the farthest wheel to the closest wheel. And that'll get all the air out of your system. But I can't do that now because my flare line is screwed up. But there you go. It's pretty simple to change a mass cylinder. Hardest part is bleeding it, which I didn't even cover in this video. But at least you can see I'm making some progress on the truck. I'll have more updates soon. Thanks for watching.